What's up, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. We are doing the CEU Saloon Seasonal Championship. We need to use retro saloons in the B class. I'm using the 1995 BMW M5. Tuning share code is in the description. The car can be bought in the auto show for relatively little money. I was thinking about many other cars like the BMW M3 from 2005, a very iconic car, the 2002 M3. Like, you know, the, the ones that we have in the Need for Speed Most Wanted livery. But we have used those quite a lot of times already. And I thought, hey, let's use a different one. One that we probably will never use again. So here we are. We use it with an off-road tune because well, obviously we'll drive an off-road race. Again, tuning share code is in the description if you want to know that. Let's see if we jump right in. And then we get to do our first overtake we're right off the bat here. And then we turn off road already. Into the water and we'll try to get towards the inside here into that corner. Break a little bit early so that we get a jump on them that could allow us into first already. Yeah, we cut them off a little bit to really make sure we stick it into first. Which works. And that means we have the lead. And I must hold it. Easier said than done, I know, but once again break early here. But we really take a very tight line into this. Stay in the water as little time as possible while the water slows us down tremendously. So I think we have a, a car with a lot of ground clearance when we try to take a shorter path through the water here, once again. And we have a corner that I very much like because you can take a very tight line through it. You just need to make sure that you hit this checkpoint here. Well, you always need to make sure you hit the checkpoints, but sometimes it's a little bit harder than other times. And we're a good bit ahead now. It feels too cross-country to be a whole lot of fun, but I guess it is what it is. I think we are looking at a victory here, but it's obviously too early to tell definitively. Let's break early here, cut into that checkpoint, use the e-brake to really get a good angle and get into that road early on. Now we'll use this to make up some ground rather quickly. Okay, our speed boost, we're up to way above 200 miles an hour in this car, which is unthinkable. Now we're obviously slowing down slowly but surely. Taking quite the skill streak here as well. Finishing the race shortly. There we go, that's a race finish and with 20 points in race number one. Well deserved. There aren't that many races that really meet the requirements for that kind of championship, so. Obviously with DLC has to repeat a lot of races there. It's always tough to decide, well, do we use a kind of fan favorite M3 from 2005 or something, or the M3 GTR or something. Do we use something like that, put on the Need for Speed Most Wanted livery and just, you know, bring the people what they want to, basically? Or do you kind of go for some variety? Because obviously we, we have used those 
M3s with uh, most wanted livery so often now. But I, I think a lot of people like were not returning viewers when new viewers and were like, hey, you could have used that M3. Yes, I could have, but I didn't this time. I promise next time I get the chance I will do it again. Promise. Alright, we're kind of busy fighting each other. That gives us four overtakes and one. And now let's see if we can kind of make a bit of a switch room maneuver. Yes, that's another three overtakes and another overtake here. And let's hold the car steady here. All of these bumps. There we go. That guy was on the bumps, so we overtook him. We pushed that guy onto the bumps, and now we go onto him ourselves, so that's kind of bad. We stay in the lead there, so that's good. Let's see if we can avoid one. Yeah, we can. They were obviously slow down by one. Early braking here. And now going over them again. We want to make sure you hold the car steady. So that can really derail your race if you make a wrong move. We have a decent lead here. But it's okay. Going into that corner. Still a, a decent lead here. Not so bad. Breaking early again. We're really just making sure we don't have any massive F ups. Because that's really what can cost us to race, completely blowing it here and just doing some nonsense. But basic racing should result in a win. That was it, 91%. Now we're just racing towards the finish line now. Shouldn't be an issue. There we go. Another win. That puts 40 points. Jump into race number three, obviously with two wins in the bag. Race number three. Can be done in a rather relaxed manner. There is someone coming. Alrighty. Let's see if we can pound that car to another victory. It's nothing special, it's just a classic car, you know. Which is kind of what this week is about, right? Come on, load faster. I'm not redundant really for recording this week, which I am glad about. Like, I could have used that car, could have used this, could have used that. So many cars. Could have used an RS6. That's also kind of pretty. Oh well, whatever. We picked a car, we live with it. You see, that's the issue when you have 800 cars in your game. Or was it 700? 600 something. It doesn't really matter whether it's 600 or 800, it's just too many to really pick one. And even when you filter by these groups, you still get like 20 cars that you could use, and you're like, I kind of want to use them all, most of them at least. Like, I wouldn't want to use that Volvo, but generally speaking, I kind of want to use most of these. I'm making 
use of our off-road tires here. Poke our nose in. There we go. We make a jump in the snow. I really, 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 really would love to do this like in real life with a Subaru WRX. I was once test driving a WRX and in the winter and it was snowy and there was ice on the road and you didn't notice that it was snowy with ice on the road. That thing was absolutely abnormal. I've never driven something like that in the winter. Like it's it's kind of useless in the summer, I guess. I mean, I haven't driven it in the summer. Maybe it's fantastic there as well, but normally my cars stick to the road in the summer, so. But in the winter, it was like with every other car that I've driven, like you, you kind of start sweating when whoever is as bad as it has been bad. But with that thing, it was like you're driving on, on, on a dry road. And you could drive it at speeds that I would have never imagined at a weather like that. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it had tires for it as well. But that was absolutely amazing, that all-wheel drive system. That was, like... I am still stunned when I think about it. Like, that was abnormal. An abnormal machine. And like, I don't know if there are comparable cars, like, it's not like I've driven a million cars in my life. Um, it's certainly possible that some of the Quattro Audis, or like the Mitsubishi Lancer cars, like that they are comparably great, but it was just, I was driving that and it was just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Especially like coming from a rear-wheel drive BMW, which is absolutely horrible in the, in the snow and on ice. So coming from that, it was just absolutely fantastic. Okay, but gushing over the car past the time for that race. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And until next time, farewell.